don't want to do this. We have to do this. No. Ah, here we go, guys. Welcome to another Tuesday. Another day where Neo was supposed to have a day off, or at least an office day. And boom, Battle.net presents us an update. PTR 1.36.1 version 3 here on the last day of October. They update again. We get weekly patches, apparently. And Dondo, you look the way I feel. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Do I look that tired? Yeah, so, your hair is a little bit... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's a bit over, <laughs> all over. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. It's really cool that we get uh, weekly iterations, I gotta say. I fully expected them to stay silent until the end of November, as they said in the previous PTR. But no, they were working on a lot of stuff. Indeed. Good news is that they uh, obviously look at feedback and stuff. Uh, some things they might have not completely figured out yet, but we'll get into that, I guess. Yeah. Disclaimer. I'm a little bit trigger happy tonight. So if you think you can poison my chat with balanced wine, this is not the day today. You risk timeouts or worse. So, let's go into this. The PTR changes of October. They didn't update the title. Uh, October 31st. Militia duration still being tinkered with. First, they buffed it from 40 to 42.5 seconds. Then they put it to 45. And now they put it back to 42.5. So it's back to version 1. Bash was addressed. They realized that it's all a little crazy. So the bonus damage has been reduced. Uh, on level 1 it stays the same from 50 to 40 on level 2 and from level uh, from 100 to 55. But that's not all of it because in the reverted changes, the best thing, Bash stun duration is not increased anymore. Not the 3 seconds for heroes, the 6 seconds for units and also the chance for Bash stays the same at a flat 25% chance. So, in general, Bash, in comparison to the life patch, just does more damage now. Devotion Aura, also addressed. Um, first, they had it to absurd numbers with 369, then they did 346, and then they realized that's a bit odd, so we do 2, 4, and 6 now. Still buffed compared to the version we have at the moment, and we'll talk about if that's necessary or not. The priests get addressed, and I can... I can tell that our friend Death Note, who loves us very much, is the happiest person on earth today because the priest cast point time got reduced from 0.5 to 0.4 and the heal cooldown got reduced from 1 to 1.1 seconds. That means that if you want to trigger a dispel, healing is less likely to interrupt that and it should be more responsive. Dondo will tell us everything about it once we're done with the patches. The Archmage gets a strength per level increase from 0.8 to 2. This is something that we uh, proposed in the community patch notes for a little bit of extra HP early in the game. Not only is Death Note the happiest person today, but also Mr. Remo Demo. He wants the Paladin to have higher movement speed for years, and the Paladin gets higher movement speed up to 300. I can spoiler, this also goes for the Dreadlord, so we got four heroes now with movement speed 300. Pit Lord, Blood Mage, Paladin, Dreadlord. Demon Hunter. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is gonna be controversial. Remo Demo get his will here as well. The mana burn range has been reduced from 300 to 250. In combination to that, Immolation is not nerfed anymore when it comes to damage. It's back to the 6 value on level 1. And they forgot a 1 at the end at level 3. So it doesn't do 7 damage on level 3, but that's obvious, I guess. Ooh. Mm. Also, one more change I think they forgot to put in there, actually. Or, yeah, Druid of the Claw has Sandro's initial mana as well. It is in the editor, they just haven't rewritten it in that fashion. Yeah, yet. yeah, correct. Uh, they forgot another thing. A little bit sloppy today, Blizzard. Was the Halloween party a little excessive? We'll 
see about that. Uh, fairy dragons get addressed. Previously, the range of mana flare was reduced. They reverted that and instead the max damage is reduced from 100 to 80. Uh, and since that is splash damage, that kind of scales. This is, uh, if that's good or not, Don Dolaro will tell us all about it. Mark of the Talon, which is the fairy fire ability of the crow form Talon, uh, doesn't require master training anymore, but instead adept training makes it a lot easier and faster to use. The big hooray for everyone that is not undead is that the Nerub Tower Frost attack now only slows heroes for 3 seconds instead of 5 seconds. A big nerf to the Nerub Tower that people wanted for years. If that's the right thing, we'll discuss it. Dreadlord movement speed, we talked about it a little bit faster. Spirit Walker build time uh, was reduced. This is 38 seconds in the live version. Blizzard wanted to put it on 33. People said, oh, this is maybe a bit extreme. So they put it on 35. Also, a buff that was nerfed is the Walker Adept training, uh, which is not in general increased, but only increased to the PTR proposal from before and is now 50 and master training 65 seconds, still a reduction of research time for the walkers. Oh, I didn't see that yet. Torrent build time reduced by 5 seconds. Interesting. They want to make Torrent more viable. The Fire Lord got big buffs in the version 2 of the PTR. They dial it back a little bit. Mana cost for incinerate from 2 to 3, still above. Uh, lava splits were requirement was 9 on the PTR before. On the live version it's 15 and now they dial it back to 13. They must have watched the Back to Warcraft Weekly Cup. Also the infernal damage. Um, it's in the middle now. Not as strong as it was, but uh, still above. Item changes. The crystal ball is not a permanent item anymore. It is a charged item with two charges that can reveal any spot on the map. It is the drop table of Wand of Illusion, uh, Sentry Wards and Replenishment Potion. Plus, of course, the cooldown removed. Um, so you can scan two spots at the same time, pretty much. Ring of Protection plus three removed from the drop table. That means that on this drop table, it is now uh, five different items instead of six with Ring of Superiority, Slippers, Gauntlets, Mantle of Intelligence and Cloak. And of course, an overall reduction from Rings of Protection from the drops. Period of Vitality, for some reason, always gave more mana than all the other items on that level. Uh, that's been dialed down to 300. Claws plus five are back. The community was crying, I want my plus five, I barely noticed plus four. And they cried so long that they get their will. <laughs> plus uh, something that we talked about on the community patch notes, the frost armor slow effect on creeps has been nerfed from five to three seconds to um, match the narrow tower slow. And in general, the frost armor slow as well. That was never addressed when the lich got nerfed. Oh, Talon gold cost, also a reverted nerf, so they don't cost more gold anymore. Immolation does the same damage as before. Raise dead, also addressed with spec to 75 mana instead of 50 mana. Here we were all scared of more necro wagon pushes that should be eliminated. And as far as I know, the circlet of nobility is back to level three. This is what it says in the editor, but it's never mentioned anywhere. Oh, actually I noticed that. Let's see. Plus, as Dondo said, the Druids of the Claw, the Bears, start with 100 mana again instead of 110, as it was proposed on the PTR. That was a long monologue. Mr. Dondo Lara had to present the changes to the people. And now you can either give the thumbs up, the thumbs down, or maybe you're a reasonable person. Give a thumbs in the middle and explain what is good and what is bad. Uh, sideways thumbs, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
a lot of some of these changes will be very weird if I strongly criticized because because they are in the same line or even at the same values as suggestions me and Sevorkas or a document presented by me and Sevorkas where you got a lot of feedback from pro players and uh, that was also related to the former PTR. So those changes, of course, I agree with. There are some big issues still with this PTR or new issues, I guess you can say. Uh, we probably didn't talk about how, like how we should go through this, but maybe like go, maybe we should go from top to bottom as to sure. start with, and then do like a general overview after. Actually, then I'll just have to do the patch notes from Blizzard so I have the right uh, order of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Militia time. We can do that first. Yep. So I move to the patch notes doc now. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do like a quick run through of the changes, like with impressions. Yeah. And we can be pretty fast, probably. And then do an overall. Yeah. So this is our, uh, what you guys are looking at is the suggestions that we presented last week. Um, and also, and then we added a line where like, if it's in the PTR or not. So this is like both what's in the PTR and the new suggestions. I guess we'll focus on the stuff that's in the PTR, of course. Um. So the changing of the Archmage, should we do the same order? Yeah, we do the same order as we have written. Doesn't matter. So they did include the changing of the uh, Archmage uh, scaling of strength, agility, intelligence. It's a very small change. It just makes it so so the Archmage has 25 more HP on level uh, 2 instead of uh, compared to how it used to, and it has one more less intelligence on level 6 and beyond. It's like a slight, slight buff uh, for Archmage survivability in the early game. Uh, for what is usually a pretty weak hero, uh, the intention behind the suggestion was that Archmage is particularly weak since it doesn't have access to any region or any healing in the early game compared to Ritual Dagger from the Lich, Moonwells from Night Elf, Heal Cells from Orc. So it gives it a tiny bit more survivability, but it's a very small uh, increase. So, I mean, we think this is fine because this is our suggestion. So not shockingly, I don't mind it. Yeah, I, At least. I think this was a very, very minimal thing uh, that, that helps with the early game that is notoriously weak. And it like it's a minor, minor nerf in the late game. This is like, this can be weaker than not picking up a tome in the late game. So nobody should really complain about that. Uh, good. Very good. Yeah. And also, I mean, the main weakness of Archmage in the late game is usually not lack of mana, I would say. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the other changes I think is good that they, I mean, we I think everyone agreed that they needed to at least reduce the power of Bash compared to how it was in the PTR. And I think we did, did like a test to say it was like 70 to 80% more like strong, uh, no matter how you measure it, basically, than the old bash. It is yeah. not a bad skill to begin with, so it was like a huge buff. Um, I think this is if they, they seem to be pretty insistent on wanting to do something to give it a bit more scaling, and then I think this is fine. It's not like a hu big enough damage increase that is going to be like you feel like your hero evaporates with like a huge hundred damage uh, attack. But it gives it a slight bit of scaling. I don't think this is bad. It gives a bit less it feels bad when you haven't been able to scale a skill uh, change from bash level or, or level two bash into a clap level three at level five, for instance. So I think this is okay. Not bad. It's fine. Yeah, I think this is not really necessary for me personally. Um, no, I don't think it's super necessary. But if they really insist on it, I don't think like yeah. this hurts that much. Yeah. Let's say. This is so far the best of all the Mountain King changes they proposed. <laughs> That's Indeed. something that I can agree with. <laughs> I agree uh, as well. Like it's a from the suggestion, it's the best. I, I also agree. I'm not sure it's needed, especially given other changes. But that's like a different thing, I guess. But yep. that uh, that goes into it. Um, the devotion aura change is now pretty minimal. So it is a pretty big. I mean, one plus armor is a big buff at level three. Though level three devotion or is mostly FFA team game based thing. Again, I wrote fine because we also suggest like if you insist on increasing it, at least give it a slight or very small increase. So um, it should be reduced from two. I've written the wrong there. I given from two. So I have to yeah. fix that. Give two four second. six. It should say two, four, six. That is correct. So they keep the same at level one, which I think is good because it was super powerful from the get-go with the new level. 0.5 more armor at level two. Maybe it, like, it makes the choice between uh, Divine Shield or even Holy Light 2 a bit more difficult, but 
probably not. I think this is fine. Like if you, they seem to be very insistent on key on changing this again. So if they are, sure, it make it make the decision making a bit more difficult regarding if you want to go uh, devotion or divine shield or holy light. I like, gotta say, this, is... this to me is a little bit of a weak argument. Like if they want to do something, then it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's I don't not think fine. It's needed either. Like it's not fine. Um, to me, it's not fine. I don't see the need to change this. Human late game armor is already one of the strongest in the game. Uh, you see it at night, you see it at Griffins. You get high armor value, you, you get the inner fire at times. I say it's not needed. Like, nobody needs this. And it strengthens human in an already strong position. So, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. But I um, like that they realize that it's not as necessary as they thought it is. Yeah, I think we're beyond like it being game breaking at least, right? And that was like a big problem in the first iterations. So, and maybe that's a low bar. <laughs> I'm trying to be a bit uh, polite here and nice, I guess. Yeah, I uh, will they... be nice at other spots. Just this, <laughs> you know me, I have to uh, wade in on the anti human propaganda that's going on on this channel for years, right? So, if there's a late game human buff, then like, I can't accept this. I mean, that is understandable. <laughs> uh, the next one says increasing uh, Paladin's move speed um, by 10. I kind of wonder how impact... This makes it as fast as Blood Mage, which is noticeably faster than other human heroes except Dark Mage. I don't know if... This is also not needed in my book. I don't get, like, the big argument for it. It makes Pal Rifles slightly better. It gives it... I guess it also gives like Pal Rifle some synergy in that you use Pala and Blood Mage and both have the same move speed now. But uh, I would also put this on the not needed uh, category. I don't quite see the argument for it. Uh, I think Pala is a perfectly good hero, uh, especially as he's a very strong support hero as the third hero. Again, like this is not a change I think changes much. Uh, to be fair, it just makes uh, Pala rifle and Pala specifically a tiny bit better. I disagree with some people that think Pala needs to be better. I also don't think every hero needs to be a starting hero. So that's also a philosophical difference, I guess, between people. I know why they changed it. I can tell you. I can read their minds. They were sitting there and they were watching a YouTube video reacting to their <laughs> changes and they were like, can this Remo Demo guy please shut up with the Paladin <laughs> movement speed? For four years he's proposing that! And they were so sick and so tired of that change in Remo's patch notes that they finally gave in. They couldn't take it anymore. So there it is. Um, once again, I gotta say, I agree. I don't think that is needed. We saw a lot of Pally Rifle games in the Back to Warcraft weeklies. And many, many people noticed it there as well. Pally first is not fun. No. Stuff doesn't it's die. Um, everything is tanky. Everything is getting healed. It's Everything is very slow. It's also timing dependent. And, you know, there's this Chinese paladin uh, thing going on where he's just running into the undead base and baptizes all the acolytes like back in the day. And that makes that annoying toxic strategy stronger. I don't think this is needed. I agree. I don't think it's needed. Pure and simple. Again, I don't think this like breaks game balance it, but it it yeah. makes also like it makes Palace third slightly better against the uh, undead because you you can escape uh, hero nukes, and I would say the human hero nuke against undead is already pretty strong. It also makes the Pala be able to catch hero undead heroes faster now with holy light if they yeah. have low HP. So it's like. That matchup is already at best equal, probably a bit human favored, as long as, especially if you're not happy. A bit to actually probably probably pretty significantly human favored if you're not happy. So I don't uh, I don't know. I think this uh, feels unnecessary to me as well in general. All right, where do you want to continue with the blood mage or with the militia? Well, the blood mage was just our suggestions, and they did not change yeah. it. So I guess we can just jump uh, then jump over that. We can yeah. do the militia duration then. Uh, our, we suggested uh, as well to reduce a bit from 45 because you do a pretty big jump from 40 to 45. Uh, a lot of human players, especially, are very aching to old school, like how the game, the old good days of the game, as they say, and long for the 45 seconds militia timer. 
Uh, militia are hugely important in like all facets facets of the match. Uh, during a match, they can creep, they can defend. They like the fast. The longer the militia lasts, the more militia are going to save just because they're faster. While militias, you run away, they have more armor, etc., etc., etc. Uh, since they were 45 seconds, gameplay has evolved a lot. We have gotten a stronger arcing tower. Peasants have more HP. Human in general is doing pretty well, except in one matchup, Night Elf, where they're doing better than they used to, but still underperforming a bit. So, doing like a 40 to 45 change, it was a big change. So, we suggested to just reduce it a bit to 42.5 and start from there. Also, it should be said, we kind of felt like this should be met with some changes to the Synergy of Arcane Tower. I don't think we need to go through that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a pretty substantial buff still. It's 2.5 seconds. Those 2.5 seconds will matter quite a lot. You'll, you More peasants will survive the early game. They will be better in mid-game fights when they are moving to the middle of the map. They're going to be able to escape more damage. It's going to matter. So, so... I still think it's a buff that is very substantial for a human. Maybe I'm feeding into the meme. And I'm sorry about that, but we get uh, Archmage buff, Mountain King buff, Paladin buff, Militia buff, uh, Food buff in general, Priest buff. No nerves Indeed. anywhere. Does human need a patch with five to six nerve uh, buffs without a single nerve? Or am I just missing something? <laughs> No, you're not missing anything. And, um, well, for all human players out there, yes, we do. No, we don't. We don't need that <laughs> many buffs, I think. Um, and, I mean, I think I'll do that more in the overall, I think, after. But I, yeah. I, we can just say that in general. It feels a bit weird of increasing human at all power levels when I would I would say that from the data I sit, sit on at least, they're doing well to very well in two matchups. Yeah. And not horrible anymore in the third one. And the third one is getting other changes as well that are impactful. So I would be very fine if the Sundering Blades ability would be taken away, for example, or if the Arcane Tower maybe gets nerfed a little bit. But yeah, this is very, very one-sided and maybe it's taught Death Note and Demon doing the patches now, who knows? Well, I got accused of or or nerfing human, so it's not uh, not me at least. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> correct. All right. Um, the priest cast point. You might have to explain this because it's a little okay. bit mechanical, and it's yeah. not uh, a change that many people immediately get. So you have cooldown and you have cast time, basically cast point. So the cast point is uh, it shouldn't. Yes. Let's see. Does it say? Point four as there we are. Um, I mean, so you had, uh, you have. I think you have the wrong document open, by the way. Yeah. Oh, so that might. That's why I was uh, reacting a bit. There we go. Point Sorry. Be the one. Um. Yeah. So basically, so you have um, a cast point that is like an animation for the cast, and the cooldown is how long between you have to wait for it for you to initiate a new casting of the spell. Uh, you don't want to just reduce one of those values uh, by itself, because then the priest heals faster, so it heals more HP over time. And heal is already a good ability, it doesn't need a buff, but you can't ca cast this spell while the animation cast uh, time is happening. So if you try to hit the spell with a priest and it's during a heal cast, it, it just ignores the order. That's why you have to like click the spell 5 million times to cast the, um, the spell. So it's not so even this... that it gets queued behind the heal, it just no. doesn't get it. It just bugs out. Quite often just bugs out. I think sometimes it queues, sometimes it doesn't. It, it's a bit of a mystery, like why it sometimes goes off and not like a long <laughs> time after. Um, but uh, at this point, uh, this change basically makes it so the animation casting time takes a bit shorter. But you increase the cooldown between each heal, so you then do like the rate of healing becomes the same. But there's a slight less chance of the heal casting interrupting your dispel. So it just makes a it's a very very small quality of life that increases the chance of you actually getting a dispel off when you hit the spell instead of the priest just uh, doing something else. And we love to see quality of life. We love to see things being less annoying and frustrating. And this is very cool to have. Indeed. 
this is a good thing. Like I don't. Yeah. I will maybe someone discovered that this is bad, but I can't like see what's bad with this. I think I tested it a bit on the test map. It looked fine. Didn't look like anything was off. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, love that. Are we moving over to orcs or orcs? Zug zug. Zug zug. Bladestorm they they kept the uh, bladestorm damage. Yeah. From at 140, uh, we were kind of. Uh, critical of that. Uh, I mean, it's probably a change that is probably not that impactful in most games, but I still think it's situationally way too strong at the moment, just in the damage department. While it's still pretty unusable in terms of how much mana it costs. So, our suggestion was to nerf the damage increase quite significantly, or just keep it at, uh, could even like keep it at what it is, but make it more usable by decreasing mana cost. But at this damage levels, it kills basically everything if it's if it is during the full duration. So your tree of life, rip, your full army rip if you can't move, which you usually can. So I guess that's a bit more theoretical change, but not a theoretical thing. But uh, yeah, I don't think this is good. Uh, just increasing the damage by that much. I think it's a lot better if they did something else to make it more usable. Yeah, I think one fifty mana would make it so one mana pot gives you one blade storm, which I yeah. think sounds good in my book at least. We might have to point out that there's a difference between Bladestorm and other stuff that was buffed before, uh, like the Volcano, like a Starfall, etc. Because Bladestorm can't be interrupted. The damage is always going to be there. The thousand damage are a thousand damage. It doesn't matter if someone hits a Storm Bolt or a Bash or whatever, all doesn't work. Um, so there's basically no counterplay except running away from it, but that's also hard. Yeah, this could be super strong, but in general, if ultimates are strong that's what they're supposed to be and it's still very very hard to get the mana together uh windwalk will suffer or mirror image whatever you go for because you have to gather that mana so maybe it's not as bad but if you have the mana then it's definitely devastating so you know i have to in one minute just pick uh, the food is guy arriving I'll okay be gone okay in like one to two minutes just uh keep the chat uh uh, happy and i'll be back <laughs> okay yeah i think we can go over some other changes that should be very uh um anonymously liked the headhunters are still buff that wasn't reverted which is a good thing a lot of people said uh that walker that the triple walker buff in build time and the two trainings together being buffed is a bit too strong so they dialed back a bit put like three seconds more on the clock for every walker and instead of 10 seconds buff per training uh, uh, 15 seconds it's now 10 uh, so overall until like if you go walker plus the depth upgrade it now takes 13 seconds longer than on the previous ptr but still a significant buff over the live version where it is a 13 second buff so there's no comment here, but I think it's just fine. Um, which doctor's not in, not addressed, maybe a patch for later. They seem to be pretty adamant that this is also a good change. I explained it before, like Night Elves, if, if they play Dryad Bears, they also have just one armor upgrade to research and it's way cheaper. Uh, and so that argument to me is a little bit invalid if you want to use that against the orcs but yeah let's wait for dondo because torrent build time is there there seems to be a is there a bug what is the torrent build time change i totally overread that uh, from 44 to 39 seconds five second on every torrent so we'll see about that can it hurt at this stage of the game? Tier 3 orc? I'm not sure. It is to me a very simple change. A very easy change. Um, not the most creative, but that's fine. We can try. I don't see it being essentially broken. From my intuition, without seeing a single game with the new torrent. 
gotta say that it all adds up because you kind of want walkers with these torrent as well. So we'll see. Don't do it. Okay, I'm back. Back. Okay, so <laughs> you can tell us why uh, what's happening with the torrent. Why they're making them uh, build faster? Yeah, and if that's a good thing, and if you like it, and if they should keep it. I haven't like thought that much about it. Um, I guess yeah, why not? I think yeah, Sevorkas and some players suggested uh, instead of like doing the Walker buffs, just reducing torn or the totem build time to give it more like uh, more of a balanced buff to hold that whole tech tree. Yeah. I think this is fine. I don't think this fundamentally solves that much with torrents in a way. Like what makes them good, what makes them bad, but it's a slight buff. And torrents are not used that much in general, so I don't see like a huge issue with it. Yeah, why not? The numbers are not updated, I think, on the dock for the torrent no, build time. No, I haven't done torrent. I forgot that yeah. one. So, so far, also, not a single nerf for Orc, which I think we concluded in the past two weeks already, is a good thing. Uh, they don't have an overwhelming strength currently in the meta game. Uh, nothing that desperately needs to be addressed from our point of view and these changes aren't insane like others were in the previous iterations of the PTR so from our perspective orc seems very fine even though I'd still since I heard it would love to see a buff for the orb of lightning with the purge damage increased but uh, we'll go into that later Shall we talk about yeah. Night Elves? Or? Oh, I should sorry. also add, I think we should add that the item changes probably help Sork a bit. Well, mm -hmm. especially the class change will help them. Uh, given the whole sum, I'm not sure now. It's like I can't in my mind construct the whole item table anymore since there's like several changes. But everything that removes uh, armor towards more damage will usually be good for Orc. Though if they get the... Um, the what? The, the Hawk item. I can't remember the name even. The hawk item, Crystal Ball. Crystal Ball. <laughs> yeah. uh, it would be horror bad for a uh, Blade Master usually, right? And it's actually pretty bad for the orc if the Nile gets it, because then you can scout the uh, Blade Master Nile more easily. But so, it's only um, like it's only two, two charges, charges yeah. and it doesn't reveal for long like it does does. So I'm a bit unsure like how the item pool changes, but I if the uh, Blade Master get the class plus one is actually pretty useful for the Blade Master. But though now Circle is back again, so who knows? It's a bit of a mess to keep track of. All right, Night Elf, shall we do it? Do we have to do it? Oof. Yes, let's do it. <sighs> go, go, go. Okay. Ha, ah, yeah. Yeah. So, emulation change uh, increase is just the same as used to be. I think we mentioned in the earlier iteration that this might be a... It's actually a big change from 1 to 10. It was okay to start with 1 to 5 and see how that actually works in practice. There's... I think there's good that a good thing that they take feedback uh, immediately, but we have to also remember that a lot of the feedback here is just us predicting what will happen in values. There's not enough games played on the PTR that you can like really do a lot of good deductions. Five, ten, ten is like now emulation is actually becoming pretty costly to miss, uh, like misactivate. We have to toggle on and off. So maybe fine was five was fine to begin with. Um, I don't think in Demon Hunter is close to as dominating as he used to be at his like the peak power level of 135. So, but yeah, I mean, it's not huge maybe, but I would start with five instead of 10 uh, personally. But I don't think that's a big, big boy change yeah. here. I mean, um, since we're still on the topic of emulation, I think we all agree that reverting the nerf in damage is a good thing. That is very good, actually. I, I remove that. I think like that 0.5 damage. For, first of all, I think that's like it gets to values which are so small in difference that it's very hard to measure what they actually do, and that also makes it very difficult to measure how the change worked. I also think double nerfing is something you should be pretty careful about. Um, and I, from the the data, suggests that human health is growing steadily closer. Uh, Night of is not doing particularly hot against undead. They're doing pretty horrible generally. So double nerfing emulation, which is the main tool for why Demon Hunter is now viable in the meta again, it seems a bit uh, too much. Yeah. So that, and also uh, I'm the guy that came up with that 0.5 damage addition. So I should have some, <laughs> some uh, insight into the matter. 
All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room that we really don't want to talk about, but we have to. Mana burn range reduced from 300 to 250. That is a huge nerf. It's a huge nerf. And like, this is a change that conceptually, like if you just just regard how the game functions and just like uh, as a concept, maybe it doesn't like seem that bad or like it has an idea behind it, right? Because Mana Burn is an anti-fun spell uh, because it removes other heroes' opportunity to do stuff. And maybe people feel like there's a bit of a li uh, too less of a risk to just go into Mana Burn. 300 range is not a lot, but it still like feels that it can hit from pretty far range sometimes. That being said, so like the conce concept of, okay, let's re re slightly reduce the power of this anti-fun spell. And also Demon Hunter has been very dominant in the meta overall, right? So these are like the ideas behind probably why they did the change or why people want to see that change. However, big however, relax Night Elves, given the current meta and how the game just functions in general, this change would be extremely impactful for Night Elf to the extent I think they will be have huge problems. Not in two, one matchup, they already have problems, but maybe two. Maybe three, actually. Mana Burn is super important against Undead to remove mana from the heroes. Night Elves, in general, especially at the top level, already suffer against Undead. So this will just make that situation even worse. We see a lot of MK first. And second against Night Elf currently from both Fortitude and Sock, the two best human players. Starbucks still mostly goes Blood Mage, but those two go out a lot of MK, where they use uh, either MK first or MK second, and they use a lot of inv invisibility and stuff to keep on trying to dodge the mana burns. This changes like the whole cost risk ratio for the Demon Hunter to do anything with MK substantially. So for like for two, two different matchups, this really changes a lot of the dynamic and why and how you can use Demon Hunter. I think this like is a very bad change given the current like balance situation in meta. I just think it's like a hugely impactful change that is negative to Night Elf. And you have this somewhat similar this uh, the opposite of the human where you only got buffs. For what Night Elves usually play, we only see nerfs, right? Yeah, and I so, kind of want to add to that. Yeah. Um, that they also reduced the ring plus three, the ring of protection plus three. So a demon hunter in general, on average, will have less armor than he has now. Um, <laughs> bro. So you have to get closer to an army when your armor is weaker than it is now. That's dangerous like yes we see the demon hunter nuked pretty much immediately now as well it is a skill to continuously use the mana burn to prepare for the big fight and i think it's a cool dynamic um even though it's an anti-fun spell yeah i agree don't do it brother or sister or person in between we don't know but don't I have to like emphasize this. I actually think this will be very, very bad, <laughs> yes. like given the current <laughs> state of how the game functions. I I don't think like the idea should be here that, but maybe they'll find up something else that will work uh, as like the thing we should hope. I think this will be super bad for Night Elf that is already dependent on Mana Burn as usage. Got to keep in mind, like I know Mana Burn is an anti-fun spell quote, but. It also makes, like, if you skill Mana Burn, you also don't have, like, the Night of then doesn't have a spell that does anything except Mana Burning, right? So it's, it's, it is, like, both ways. It's not just one way here. So I think I don't quite understand that concept either fully. So I think it's fine. It's such a, also such an iconic and spell that has been in the game for all time. So I don't get, like, why that should be a nerf to the ground, basically. Uh, this screams Use Warden. Yeah. But however, yeah. I don't think th it doesn't help because the things I mean, let me just say. Uh we go we, we can go to the warden change and try to do like a bit of a synergy here. The the warden changes I s actually still disagree with with how the changes are implemented. I think seven targets at level 3 is hugely impactful. Uh and I think just it's just too much damage for such a mobile hero, especially with the blink uh, increases. However, before the Night Elves again go insane. There will be a quite... There will not be that many matches where this will be impactful enough that it actually matters. Because a lot of Night Elves will get killed by Undead before that, 
by the frenzy push. That hasn't changed anything uh, in this change. Also, even against human, it does a lot of damage. Now it is like it can change matchups, but from my interpretation, a lot of Warden games against human either end in one base pushes if, uh, or goes like into super late game with knights. So stuff that can survive fan a lot better than like the cast army. And in those situations, even two targets more might not be that impactful. And you still have to hit all seven targets and stuff, right? So it's a lot of ifs and buts whether you get to that range. I still don't think this change is good for the Warden because it makes it situationally super powerful. But uh, that doesn't remedy the changes to the Demon Hunter because most Night Elves and most, and especially on certain maps, you can't get Warden to that power level you need to for it to survive the, either under uh, push or maybe against like certain human threats. So, and I mean, you, and you can't go Warden against Orc. Uh, yeah, many have tried, but uh, yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't really work. Um, let's talk about fairy dragons and then address the Night of Heroes maybe again when we go to the undead side of things, because there's yeah. a synergy that needs to be discussed, of course. Um, you gave us a big rundown of fairy dragons mana flare and told us why they shouldn't tackle the range and now they revert the changes from before and reduce the max damage. Is that the correct way of doing it? Yeah, I mean, this is our suggestion, I think so. I think um, probably f um, Fair Dragons, for their mana flare ability against humans specifically, was always super powerful. Blizzard buffed it, so it got used. People discovered it was very useful. It still does 80 damage with 80 splash damage to the next target, 160 damage if they're close. Casters are usually pretty close to each other. If they use over 25 mana, or 25 mana or more, still a lot of damage. Two fairies can still wipe out a human caster army in like three or two spell cast, uh, cast rounds, so if they don't have a heal scroll. This slightly reduces the damage. I mean, it's pretty big, like 40 damage overall if it hits both, gets the mana flared and hits the next target. Uh, but it's still 160 damage. You still need to invest a heal scroll to do more than one spell from each uh, unit. I think this is fine. It gives human a slightly more time to react, slightly more time to uh, kite, slightly more time to heal, but it still remains a super powerful spell, or anti-magic uh, spell, especially against uh, human where it needs to be strong. All right, Night Elf, more or less done. This will trickle in into the undead side of things as uh, they didn't address... Um... Oh no, there's one more. Sorry, I forgot about that. Allowed to... Town, yeah. Exactly. Allowed to research Mark of the Talon um, once the Druid of the Talon Adept training is done. So you don't need Master training anymore uh, to use Fairy Fire when in Crow form. This was your suggestion. You must be happy with it. Yeah, I think this is like a small cool, ch cool change. Cool, cool change. Cool change. Um, I don't think it will matter that much in that many as aspects. It's more of a cool thing if you can get it. It makes uh, talents now as an anti-air unit also be have like some usability when they're on in the air, except of just watching the air. They might do at some points. I think this is like a good uh, small change. Again, impactfulness with the other changes already involved will be very small, usually. Because, again, Night Elves, the matchup they would mostly use this would be against um, Undead, and they already struggle to get to that point. And they now will probably struggle even more with these changes. So, yeah. I think yeah. Um, it can be really, really cool if we reach the super late game of Undead versus Night Elf, which can be one of the best matchups, but the problem as always, is to get there. And yeah, pro that won't happen too often with these patch suggestions. Uh, but in general, thumbs up for that. Um, I always hate when units serve a purpose for like five seconds in a fight and then they're useless, just like gyros when they don't have bombs. So allowing yeah. this without forcing a tier three tech and the master training and then the mark of the claw, like that's a gigantic hurdle for a talent to use this ability in that state. So cutting this down, great, I like it. Still needs to be researched, unlike Sundering Blades, for example, so good stuff. Undead! Um, the Crypt Lord passive is still not changed at all, 
Um, they didn't go through with the crazy stuff that you suggested. To me, which is which is totally, I mean, in a first situation here, I think is fair. I think yes. that we need a lot of testing and stuff to either, and we're not sure that it's even usable. So who knows? But um, yeah, still think that like yeah, the very weird case uh, that never going to happen with the level ten creep lord makes that armor increase in level three a bit extreme. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We'll see. Yeah. The only one guy who's going to play like that, we both know who it is. Um, he's in chat, pretty sure. So and he's from India. Right on. Car. My personal assistant, not the car. <laughs> Narub Tower. A lot of talk for years about the Narub Tower. In the first iteration, they increased the attack cooldown from 1 to 1.5. And if I understand correctly, this was now not reverted, correct? No, they haven't written it. I actually haven't checked an object yet. I can do it, but uh, I, I would think that would be there. I'm pretty sure that change actually, like the more I think of it, was directed towards the tower rush because it reduces the DPS, right? That's the mm -hmm. main thing of the cooldown increase. That's like, it of course makes it a bit more difficult to ju juggle between units and heroes, but mostly I think it's a DPS decrease by 33% by doing that change. Okay, and now the big new change is yet another nerf reduce the slow duration of narrow tower and main building as well by the way as this is one shared attack that a narrow tower shares with the main building uh from five seconds to three on heroes while it stays five seconds on units yeah our suggestion was to reduce it by start by one. I said that you can do two by heroes. Personally, there's a bit like disagreement among the pros and me and several workers among that uh, concept. Um, I guess the reason they do they only do heroes uh, reduction in how long it slows is because, as you mentioned, water elementals, which I think is actually makes sense. Um, water elementals are already super powerful in canceling under expo attempt. So I'm, I mentioned this when we were not on the air. I think. Yeah, yeah, I did. Sorry. Uh, but we know, Neo. We know. We know everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I actually don't mind this change. I, don't, I think the main reason to nerf Nerb Tower, first of all, is a super powerful slow. It's the only slow and like find that kind of spell in the game that doesn't have different values for heroes and units to, as the get go. So it also makes sense in that way. This makes it slightly more easy to both harass and get out of harasses. Uh, with Night Elf heroes and all heroes, but maybe it's particularly Night Elf heroes. Um, I think this is a good change in the right direction. I would say, I feel like on most maps, with some exceptions, you see less and less of under expo attempts in the matchup where it's mostly problematic against Night Elf in general these days. So I hope, like, I do think we maybe don't need to do as drastic changes to Nerub as we maybe thought of like a couple of months ago to avoid, because when under the expos were the meta, the under night of play was very difficult for night of because it was so hard to make that expo costly. I think this might might be enough to make that expo costly, and it will also help against the tower rush. So I think these are good changes if they're like the perfect changes. If we need to look more at the numbers, etc., who knows? But this is a good change in the right direction, in my opinion. All right, we will definitely have to observe if, if this is too much because that is pretty drastic in terms of power level of the narrow tower uh i think it has the right purpose it has the right goal narrow tower slow or that kind of slow in general is super obnoxious five seconds slow on a hero and you have very little that you can do against it for example you can't dispel it you can you can yeah that's what you can do, I guess. You can't dispel it. Um it, it was always very, very strong. Is it now too weak? Will Undead uh, still be able to expand? That needs to be seen, but you can still buff it up to four again or find the middle ground somewhere else. Um Or down to two, Neo, you never know. Or down okay. to two, you never know exactly. We that is that goes both ways, of course. Um but yeah, I don't really like under tower pushes. I don't really like the Garg play if it's very, very obnoxious and the other uh, race has nothing to throw against it. So yeah, this will hopefully help with that. We can always hope. We can always, we should always hope. Um, we have the mana cost for summon uh, skeletons reverted. Removed. 
Yeah. That's super good, I think. Yeah. I think many people alerted to the fact that playing against mass summons or basically like the concept of quote unquote free units is super annoying in yeah. RTS games in general. If you make, I mean, 50 mana is still, it's still a cost, right? It still costs mana, but it feels very cheap. It will make necro pushes a lot more powerful and just necro play overall. And even though it's a beatable strat, it's a super frustrating strat to play against. It's super uh, easy to pull off. It has like a weird uh, easiness to do versus easiness to counter uh, curve that is very lopsided in one direction. I think nobody wants to make like mass summon skelly. It's a big part of the game. People yeah. want to see more necros and stuff. That's totally fine. But not by just summoning 500 skellies that just is impossible to deal with. So this is super good that yeah. they removed. Apart from that, no other change except the Dreadlord now has more movement speed. I'm not too sure what to think of it. Because here we have a thing that... Well, the Paladin has no catch, but a nuke. Um, the Dreadlord has both. So yeah, he's very slow, but he got sleep. And sleep is, especially when you chase a unit or a hero, an extremely st uh, strong spell if nothing is there to wake up that unit. Um, will it make a big difference? I'm not too sure. I could probably say the same to the Dreadlord that I said against the Paladin. I think it's slightly less toxic than a Paladin can be in extreme situations, but we've also seen carrion swarms into human bases and it's also annoying. I don't know um, if that's necessary. It could be good. It could be bad. I don't think it's game breaking. It's also like a couple of things, I think, as well. It's uh, we again, it's the hero we see quite often as a third hero. So it's obviously not that weak since people choose to do it. It yeah. is not. I think it's underrated in one like in solos. I don't think it's like the best meta choice, but it's not a horrible hero by all sorts. We see it in pro games not that uh, rarely and it does well and it works especially well on certain maps this makes it even better on those maps with the movement speed it reduces i mean the dreadlords thing is like you can both catch you with sleep but it's also pretty vulnerable i would say before you get a proper army yeah. now the dreadlord is less vulnerable i also wonder like I worry a bit about the dreadlord synergy against the uh, flying machines with this because it's already good with against flying machines now it's a lot of, harder to like do that micro dynamic True. between a faster dreadlord that can move faster in and out of like range and stuff so that's a good point i didn't see that yet yeah so i, I i'm not that i'm not a big fan of the change also because i think the dreadlord playstyle is pretty like the solo play dreadlord playstyle is super frustrating people usually don't like to play that much against it it's very lamey and uh, now you make it even stronger in that department well, you simultaneously buff a very good third hero in at least two matchups, three matchups if you go for Gargs. So, yeah. So, um, um, flying machines still have a movement speed of 400 plus they are flying. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You they're still a lot faster. They're but, still um, a lot just, faster, exactly. I just want to point that out. It's, it's this big dynamic when you have flying machines and you get the Dreadlord, especially yeah. when you get to level three for like, you can go, I think you saw, we saw one game, Sock one to zero not that long ago when you had the armor upgrades on destroyers against like a gazillion flying machines and it did like no damage. <laughs> it was the last temple <laughs> against the Dreadlord uh, that did Cavern Swarm as well. So yeah. it's a dynamic. You also saw the mass Garg strat from Happy, right? Yeah. So it was... Uh, Making Dreadlord a lot more powerful, like not a lot more, but more powerful in that match. Like it matters actually quite a bit, I think. So I don't think this is. Um, I'm not sure it's. I don't think it's necessarily a good change in direction of balance. I also think it's just a change that might degrade game value, in you know, lack of a better word, like gameplay, how it feels to play. So yeah. Yeah, that's of course the thing with like the flying machines. You have to fly in a little bit, try to do some damage then fly back it's all a little it's not really kiting it's just poking it, it, yeah. in the air which is a little odd that you don't see too often uh, okay so we'll see how that works i'm not heavily against it i think be careful and i think they are careful and this can still be reverted relatively easy if necessary but no not as strong of feelings as i have against the paladin uh 
buff on movement speed because of course it's the anti-human propaganda of the undead casters back to Warcraft. So obviously this is my take. Um, so this change of a demon hunter and the buff to the warden in combination with the narrow tower change does that do the right thing? Does that accomplish the right thing? No. I think so <laughs> yeah, too, dude. I, I mean, I can explain it a bit, uh, like go into detail. I know the Niles are already up in arms and we can just say, I mean, all numbers suggest that Undead have a pretty significant advantage against Night Elf. And this mm -hmm. actually holds true for like all top MR levels, even if you exclude the one and only Mr. Happy which is always an outlier, makes everything difficult. But even excluding him, that's the one matchup that is consistently showing an advantage for un, uh, for one race. The others have a tendency, tendency to shift a bit more, like depending on which players you include, etc. But uh, that one is very bad in general. Um, the main problem that Nidales face against Undead is that the gameplay is just, uh, I think it's twofold. The one thing is the gameplay is super... Um, unforgiving for Night Elf. Uh, they have uh, several moments during a match where the game can just completely disappear. I think the level 3 DK, level 1 Lich on standard play is like a super weak timing for Night Elf. They can pick up their creeping. Uh, if the Undead gets an expo up, which is rare these days, they can go the full mass Garg army that Night Elf doesn't, kind of doesn't have a full uh, good counter against, especially if they don't go Panda. Then they kind of have no counter. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, and the, but the one thing, of course, that we see in most games in practice is the so-called frenzy timing, which is uh, the uh, eight thirty-nine ish minutes. You can correct me by the seconds, Neo. Uh, somewhere uh, around that time. To to quote the world champion, it depends. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere around there. Like, yeah. yeah, between Basically, eight thirty and nine thirty is uh, yeah. usually what we aim for. And that timing push is super powerful against night elves. Um, you now nerf the two main components I also have tried to do to keep that push uh, less uh, destructive. You nerf the Demon Hunter, so the Demon Hunter is used to drain mana during and before the fights. So you try to you try to basically drain mana and keep one more production or two more production cycles going, so you have a bit more uh, power against the push. Uh, and also, of course, it's not now it has to be twofold, right? You don't only makes it less viable that the demon actually gets the mana uh, drain off, but it also makes the demon take a lot more damage. That drains more moon juice, has a lot of negative impacts on those times where you try to fight. You also have nerfed immolation, so the whole power, both the harassment the Night Elf does against the creeping of the undead is now weaker, and you make the creeping of the Night Elf Demon Hunter weaker as well. So. What is that solution? And if is so, the thing is like okay, but can't Night Elf go other heroes? They can go Keeper first. Uh, has not proven to be super viable in mod. They can happen sometimes. You can do trick and you can be if you get like the proper everything falls into your place. You can win with Mass Air, but it's not been super successful for a long while now. The other way is to go Warden, which is super finicky and can die also very fast to the same uh, frenzy push. I don't think the Warden changes are that impactful for that push. Because you usually don't have... Maybe you have seven ghouls. I think that's pretty rare. Uh, you have a hard time getting level five uh, Warden. So I don't know. I feel like all the changes are just even making a Night Elf even weaker against that specific push. And the neuro changes might make it so that that one th thing they struggle against, the fast expo into guard play, becomes more common. But they're still going to die against the other thing they die to all the time, which is the frenzy push. <laughs> yeah, um, you see, it's very problematic, and there's a lot of problems still unaddressed in this patch. I, I'm, I'm watching these nine-minute pushes for pff, since the ESL Cup days, like even longer. I think the entire Reforged era is this nine-minute push, more or less. And it's really bland. Like, it's so boring. It's not interesting. There's no dynamic. There's no back and forth. There's just, are you ready or are you not ready? And then, yeah. I I don't have much hope that this is going to be reduced. And, yeah, this is not great. I'm still yelling for Frenzy Nerf, which would, of course, 
reduce the potency of ghouls at that stage of the game or delay the power spike, which feels very necessary now. I don't... I don't think you can fix this matchup without a frenzy nerf. No, I don't think so either. I think there's two suggestions we made, right? And that's uh, in our suggestions. That was reducing both the frenzy attack rate speed increase, which reduces DPS a bit. Less than people probably think. Yes. Uh, but induces the DPS a bit. And also increasing the research time by five seconds. I would say, personally, that these changes are super conservative. Yeah. I think you can do actually, I, well, people are going to kill me probably, but I think you can maybe even go down to 25 and maybe even 10 seconds on the frenzy duration time. I mean, maybe that's too much doing both, but I think people underestimate, like it sounds 5% of increase in induction attack rate or less sounds impactful. It's 0.5 DPS basically. So it's not that much. Yeah. And DPS only matters when you get enough hits that it becomes infinity. So it doesn't reduce that much damage impact in the beginning. Five seconds, five seconds more, five seconds less before another ghoul or fiend can be built. Maybe not impactful, impactful enough either. The idea was to start in a, to like pushing it in a direction and see. And of course, there's one thing that and that's probably are screaming about now is that we already have a matchup that we feel is difficult, at least most undeads do, and that's human. Hence, we suggested to do the night nerf and tinker a bit with how the early game arcing tower. And also why we also didn't want to overbuff human in general, as the militia time, the other stuff, because we need to keep like these two things in, uh, in our thoughts at the same time. So the thing is, with these changes, a human is now probably doing even better against undead, because you didn't hit anything like that actually hits that matchup, except just pure buff for human. But you also just made the undead night of match worse, and I don't know. It, it kind of those those jigsaw puzzles are still like a huge miss there. Um, it is by the numbers the most problematic matchup in the game by distance. Human orc looks bad as well, but they get a pretty substantial buff with headhunters. Also, I think meta changes with fast X and stuff might figure itself a bit more out over time. Yeah. But undead night of has looked horrible for. <clears throat> Two, three years now? Two years, maybe, at least. Yeah. So uh, it's a big missed opportunity that they not even target it, but they also make it significantly worse. I think there's a, there's some vocal Night Elf players out there that uh, may be a bit too vocal at all times, but they do have a good point when they feel a bit uh, put back by these changes in together, like, um, especially for the Undead matchup. Yeah. Um, but I also think this actually, like, I think this, personally, I think this might wear veer like slowly the um, like the bottom line against both orc and human to be like i think this patch would be super bad for night as it is stated by now yeah um to like i think it's the right approach with the narrow tower change to get rid of toxic tower push uh stuff and also an easy fast expansion and create a harassable fast expansion i'm not a big fan of the Gargoyle vs. Hippo play, and that has one reason, and I say it for years now, and that's the heal scroll for undeads in the shop. Without that heal scroll, you have a way more interesting dynamic because both want the heal scrolls and fight over them at the shop, but the undead has no incentive to contest the shop because you have heal scroll at home and not the meme heal scroll, but the real heal scroll. Uh, I think that's a big problem against hippos. Without these heal scrolls at home, uh, everything in that regard would be different, especially with a, a more powerful fan of knives on top of that. So that would be less of a problem. And yeah, of course, frenzy timing, we talked about it. Um, so that would be my idea to tackle this. Plus, yeah, this uh, 9 minute 30 push as well. And if we look at this from the other side, I think this will probably make human versus undead worse as well. Make orc versus undead. Hmm, not too sure with the headhunter nerves. But it doesn't really lead to a more balanced game. Like undead has been hit hard for a long time. And that's still kind of the case. Getting worse-ish, except with the dreadlord changes. that. Could be a big help, of course. But yeah, I'm 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 not sure about these changes, man. There's uh, some substantial stuff missing for me. 
I also think the album, we should probably mention the abomination change. I think most the feedback I got from Undead so far is that it's a nerf and like, or it doesn't help what the main mechanic of that unit is, which is to be big and blockable and spread the disease cloud. So um, you can maybe also like, I don't think that's necessary either. Probably should be mentioned. But yeah, mm. yeah, well, no, I, I think, I don't think Headhunters with 25 more HP is still that doable against Undead. Because I think Undead just discovered the way you have used them by even, of course, you don't one shot them as you don't now where they're completely unusable in that, like, yeah, against the mass school style. But I don't think it moves the needle to that extent that you now can say that will be the meta. I'm, I don't convinced. Maybe if they also like if ghouls are slightly weaker, maybe. And of course, if we keep nerfing on that, and at some point it shows up in the data, or just like from our from our viewing experience, that undead becomes too weak, we need to target those matchups where that's a problem. And that's also like where we're trying to be a bit careful with the human undead matchup, which I think is pretty much on the edge. Also, orc versus undead, though I don't think the headhunter change is impactful. Yeah. That being said, I think like under Night Elf is such a obvious target to hit. So we need to try to target that matchup and then see what we can tweak uh, if we need to tweak more in other matchups to compensate. But um, yeah, uh, do, doing like a blanket nerf of Night Elf overall in the hopes of the one warden saving everything seems super hopeful. Yeah, I guess so too. Uh, quick um, annotation for the for the abominations, um, you get more damage on the front line because like in an ideal world, one more A-bomb can attack a target. Maybe that makes up for it. Maybe that's going to be good. I think this is just something we have to see because on the uh, on the PTR uh, Fridays, we haven't seen these A-bombs at all. So yeah, it could be good, could be bad. I would rather think it's on the good side, but maybe I'm wrong. That can definitely be true. Uh, I want to talk about items real quick. Uh, or are we yeah. not done yet? No, no, let's go. Okay. We had a clear goal. The entire scene had a goal. Blizzard is with us. Rings of protection need to go. In some form or way. We got three item levels. All have Ring of Protection, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5. And Blizzard has decided to remove Ring of Protection, plus 3, from the... Wait, was it moved or was it removed? It was removed, right? Uh, plus 3 is now removed, plus 4 remains. Which is yeah. a bit counterintuitive to me, but we can... Yeah. Okay, so that's, I think, not... Oh, is it updated? I'm once again on the wrong thingy here. 2.0. It's updated, yes. Can so. you uh, make the row for in PTR a lot smaller so it fits on one screen. There are. Wonderful. Fine. There we go. Uh, yeah, Ring of Protection plus three removed from the drop table so it's not available anymore alongside Ring of Superiority, Slippers, Gauntlets. I mean, I think you're, um, switching the ring stuff up, we, have prob we had a big of a difference, I think, when you increase plus three and then remove plus four, I think was RRD or something. I can't I actually can't remember every like detail here, but just because I think plus four ring is now so, still super uh, undervalued in its drop uh, table level. Um, but at least you don't get the plus seven hero after two creep camps, uh, yes. so plus seven armor creep uh, hero from two creep camps now, which is also also a big nerf to the demon hunter <laughs> yes our poor boy is uh he's he's a reason to be emo now with these changes basically yeah we can go on concerts together dude it's all good we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> cry a bit i bring the tissue it's gonna be fine um yeah i think you are right our idea was uh to move ring of protection plus three to the level two drop table and remove ring plus four uh they decide differently maybe to save some work so they don't have to do three things, but only two. Um, that makes it so, in conjunction with the circlet being reverted to level three, that the level two drop table has exactly three items. Again. And that's why we wanted to have the ring plus three on level two, so we have four items on the drop table and not just a 33% chance. Hmm. 
could be better. Like it's not, it's not that bad. The direction is the right one, but with a simple change, it could be so much better. I agree. Perfect. I agree. Claw. And I, oops, sorry. And I kind of feel like with all, you can just add with all these item suggestions, um, to me, it seems like, um, they do like one by one and they don't kind of just like, look like they should like, just have a list drop table level, drop table level. And just like, like, it kind of feels like they just do a lot of, um, they do this one item and this one item without like doing the full, um, the full list basically. So yeah. that's why we get like this asymmetrical drop table sizes to this extent, uh, which is a bit extreme at like different levels now. There we go. It's relatively clear here. It's five items. There it's three Then there's five, six, and then level four and level five are gigantic. I don't think I added everything to level six just yet, but yeah, there's a, uh, there's something missing there. And I, I really hope they implement new items. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I saw that they added some stuff or I they added one, one item basically. Oh, is that the bad one? The one where you recall a build there. Oh, yeah, they added it, but it's, it's not droppable, is it? No, that's maybe I haven't actually, I just saw that it was added. So for people who are, who don't know what we're talking about, there's something in um, the, in the editor, you can look at all the items and the items that drop are listed in, or can be purchased, are listed in standard items permanent. And there's the diamond of summering, uh, summoning that teleports X amount of units from a targeted era to the hero when used. And that thing is permanent on a two minute cooldown. Like that's insane. Yeah. It's It's just completely nuts. And why did it have to find like the most extreme of them? (laughs) Right? First the pickaxe, now the recall. Like boys, if it's a charged item and you can use it once, that's bad enough. But I can kind of see that why they think that's usable permanent two minute cooldown you guys gotta be kidding me don't 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 implement it don't 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 do it don't do it bro don't do it bro um yeah and what's your other item changes we already went through crystal ball i think i think i have a weird idea of crystal ball now being like either super underwhelming because you don't get a permanent item for heroes that want to keep that, and some matchups the scouting doesn't provide you anything. I think a lot of people would be very unhappy with this against the human fast expo, for instance, because the human's not gonna do anything than defend his expo or harass you, uh, trying to defend his expo. For human, for instance, like I just like as a human player, I can imagine situations, for instance, on Norton Isles against um, Night Elf. Uh, having the ability to scan immediately after, like you set up, you start setting up your expo. If the knife goes for counter expo or not, can be situationally super powerful. So there's like situations where I can see like this becoming actually pretty pretty good at the current iteration, but it can also be super underwhelming in a lot of situations. I don't um, know when when it would have been down to you, we'd still be playing patch one point two seven. You are so conservative. <laughs> Blizzard wants to freshen up the game, and you're standing. No, I'm not saying dude. necessarily this is bad. It just it gives it a bit of a wonky, <laughs> uh, like cost benefit thing, right? Like when it sometimes can be super good, some you very often super bad because in the early game you just like permanent items a lot more than you do this. Uh, somewhat underwhelming and uh, usables, depending on the matchup and the situation, but. There's also some matchups where basically the early game is two heroes or two small armies just colliding on each other for like the first four minutes. So what you're going to scout anyways, like you know what's happening behind it. Um, so, yeah. You know, I like that thing. I think it's okay. The crystal yeah, ball so. was a meme item and it was a permanent item and nobody liked it. It was kind of breaking that drop table. And by just simply removing it from that drop table it's already a plus for the game and adding something to a drop table that has very few items that has benefits and also negatives to items that are currently 
on that consumable level 2 drop table is kind of cool. I like, for example, you could say, oh, it's uh, just like a ward. No, it's not. You don't have to go there. You don't have to drop the item. You can just uh, simply do it from afar, from wherever. Also, there's no cooldown. You can scan two spots at the same time without any time in between. So if you're not sure what your opponent's doing, tack, tack, crystal ball, there we go, you know. Uh, can, of course, be underwhelming. Yeah, but those are items and that can happen. I think it's true. almost a net plus to do it so without a risk. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's uh, like very risky either. Um, I think, yeah, I, I, it's going to be similar to me as as Sentry Wars are because a lot of people, and I do understand why they think Sentry Wars are way too powerful at certain points, but it can also be an underwhelming item. Like if you actually know what's happening. You're on the defensive, maybe. Okay, you see that point of the map, but there's like there's actually like games where even if you see what the guy is doing, like it can't, it won't change what you're gonna respond, anyways. <laughs> uh, and that's not like and uh, please crystal ball gives you opportunity to check out like uh, certain spots, right? And expo checking, I think, is like it can be super powerful for. Yeah, because if you're a human, you get level three AM, you're running across night of base. If you know there's an expo building, you'll just go and cancel that, right? If you don't, you have to like gamble on it being there, and if it isn't there, it, it feels super bad because then you lost a lot of time. So it can be good, but yeah, like it's going to be hit or miss, which some items are, which I think is fine. It's a bit of an RNG in this game. That's okay. Also, it was my idea, and I posted it on Twitter, and I got 23 likes for it, Dondo. <laughs> With the big boys now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. Twitter millionaire. Um, is that it? Are we done? We didn't did we go through the Fire Lord. Oh stuff, yeah, Fire Lord. Um, True, you're right. Fire Lord sorry, has been sorry, guys. buff nerfed oh, or nerf buffed. What is it? Nerf buffed. because uh, we wrote the incinerate change first, so it's uh, nerf buffed. No, it's nerf nerfed actually. I mean, isn't it buff it is, nerfed? Yeah, I mean, it it's better than it is in live, but yep. it's worse than it was in the former iteration of the PTR. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot better than it is live, but it's worse than in the PTR. So incinerate mana is now reduced from six to three. Um, we saw in the, some of the um, weekly cup games that incinerate after, uh, even from the get go, but especially like after level three or when you hit, especially when you hit level four, uh, you need never drain mana anymore. It just kept up with the same as the region rate of the, of the fire lord more or less. So it was basically like a free spell. And the my lava splits just in the early game was insane. Like with nine, you could get eight lava spawns from like one single creep camp. So uh, I think this toning down these buffs uh, is good. I think we originally suggested that incinerate maybe should not go uh, lower than four, but I mean we can try three now. It's still the fire lord with its inbuilt-in weaknesses, so yeah. maybe it doesn't matter that much. And I really like that they reduced the lava spawn split because that could be super problematic uh, in a lot of situations. Maybe they can reduce it to twelve now. It reduced all the way to nine. But yeah, 13. I mean, okay. they thought it's 12. Why don't make it 12, right? Yeah. It was, it like, was kind of odd. Try to test the actual value they wanted yep. to test. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if that's too little. Uh, nine was definitely too much. So yeah, right direction. Volcano, also the damage is not 150 anymore, but 125. Can't really do that much damage with that, I guess. Uh, okay. Okay. Also, I can, there's some personal experience. I think yesterday I faced a level nine Fire Lord in a it's, game. It's fun, huh? I'm kind of glad that Volcano didn't do 150 damage <laughs> the time my <laughs> whole army and three heroes got stunned. Why Why didn't you just hammer him? Well, I did win the game eventually uh, with three heroes and a 100 foot army, but... Uh, Look at this guy bragging about his letter performance since he's playing again. No, I I, th <laughs> I think the other guy did a lot better than I did. I kind of, like, he played any other hero would win that game 10 times a day, so I uh, know. Uh, so, I mean, Fire Lord is still a bit of a niche with these changes. I think if, you're, if you actually want to see more as like a second hero overall and stuff like that, uh, you need a bigger rework. Uh, so yeah, but I don't mind these changes as they are now, but they they were too good for what they were earlier because it just made them situationally super bonkers, basically. So I will give the thumbs up, thumbs down to the added and modified changes with PDR 1.3, 6.1 version 3. And then maybe you can give them a direction of what it's still 
left to do. So, I say, militia duration reduced, nice. Bash bonus damage reduced, nice. Bash uh, stun duration increased, reverted, nice. Bash chance reduced, reverted, nice. Devotion Aura, the way is the right one, it's still unnecessary for me. Priest, both changes, nice. Archmage, strength per level, nice. Paladin movement speed, not nice. Mana burn range reduced, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. Remo might have said so, we don't. Listen to us. Mana flare, max damage, nice. Mark of the Talon, nice. Narrow tower frost attack, nice. Dreadlord movement speed, mm, we'll see. Spirit Walker nerfing the buff, nice. Walker Adept upgrade nerfing the buff, nice. Torrent build time, no hard feelings, but can't probably break anything. So it's a solid try. Fire Lord, nice with maybe needs a bit more mana and a bit lower split. So like between middle and up. Crystal Ball from me. Nice. Net win. Nice. Ring of Protection. Uh, as we said, move it to level 2. Remove the plus 4 and then we're fine. Claws. I don't like it. But other people have different opinions on this. I think it was the nice power level for the rest. Periapt. Nice. Frost Armor slow on creeps. Nice. Reverting talent cost. Super duper nice. I love this. This is really good. Immolation damage change reverted. Nice. Raise dead cost reduced. Nice. So what they do is in general pretty good. In most cases very good. In some other cases that Mr. Dondolaro will now sum up, they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm just assuming they're going to revert to Demon Hunter change. But if they're like Mana Burn change, if they don't... Uh... This becomes even more difficult. But let's assume they revert to Demon Hunter Mana Burn change. They, I think things they can do further. Start with Emo at level and with 5 mana, but okay. That's one thing. Look at ghouls. Make ghouls slightly weaker for their power spike. They're super impactful in all matchups. They're super good against Night Elf. You can, you can tr just do, try to do changes and find the perfect values. But at least they need changes. Both in timing and in damage output. And the last change I would say for Undead is, uh, unfortunately, maybe a small nerf as well. Reduce the slow on Lich. I still think that Nova effect, especially on units, is just super insane on level 3. Like 8 seconds slow. That will also give make it a bit easier for the human change I think you should do. Uh, well, at least one of them uh, is to reduce Sundering Blades, because otherwise I think Undead human will get pretty bad if you also reduce li uh, Lich, slow and uh, ghouls. And lastly, human is looking pretty good with these changes, I think, or maybe a bit strong. Don't do more buffs to human. Human have buff, 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 buff now on the list. Maybe try to start looking at, maybe through some, some things we can do. Yeah. Bit. If it would be down to me, a list of changes that still needs to be introduced. Uh, remove Sundering Blades, Nerf Ghoul Frenzy, Remove the Demon Hunter Mana Burn stuff, and maybe a new item. I wrote down the list of items that are in the uh, campaign, in the editor, that could still be used. And if you find something that gives us a little bit of a uh, mix of stats that we don't have yet... Uh, for example, a smaller rune braces that can be found earlier, a smaller Sobi mask, um, something that maybe doesn't do too much to armor because we have so many armor already, but stuff like that. Um, that would be nice. There's a list out there on Reddit. Take some stuff that's not too crazy and try to put it in. And then we'll I'll see. I'll add if one more thing, by the way, Neil. Uh, okay. I have to. Just because uh, it is in our suggestions, we sent them. They think they should be available anywhere. So if, they, if you're wondering, guys, the details. But uh, I think finding a way 
to make the like since we're removing Cerning Blades, maybe we make Lich and uh, Lich Nova slow a bit uh, less powerful with ghouls as well. Like if you do all those things, maybe find a way, and that's our suggest in general to tweak a bit how the Banshee thing works, right? Make the possession more visible is our suggestion. We showed how that can be done. And also not make it undispellable anymore, because it just mm, totally mm, just messes up the undead mirror matchup, which is now just yeah. master story. True. Or just make destroyers unable to dispel anti-magic shield. That if would you be insist on keeping it undispellable, I would say that's uh, also a solution, yeah. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's it for today. I don't want a call-in show today. I'm getting too triggered by comments today. Yeah, and I mean, we're, I am at least so I, or always available in the DMs, so I might uh, yeah, regret saying that, but it's fine. I think I uh, get a lot of good feedback there, actually. So just let me know. I don't want any DMs, except from, from Blizzard, if they want to pay me for our work here, then, of course, you're allowed to contact me. Um, please don't contact me today. I'm done. So have fun destroying yourselves. On Twitter and on the Discords, please just be civil, as civil as possible. Don't be too outraged. It's just a game for most of us. Uh, be nice. Be reasonable. <laughs> you won't yes. be, but try. So thank you, Dondo. <laughs> try, <please. laughs> thank you, Dondo, for joining me and uh, providing great insight once again. And we see each other tomorrow for the Doobie Engine of Wonders Cup Qualifier. That's going to be cool. Some gameplay and not just talk craft. Take care, everybody. <laughs> See ya. On Friday is BlizzCon. Woo! Just compromise It's the chance of your life